and you know we, we lost. You know, I had, I had I had a pretty bad game, and I was broken at that point. I was like, Lord, I try to do everything right. Um, I try to pray, I try to fast, and do those things to to please you, and it wasn't enough, and, and I was broken. And you know, at that point, I believe God told me, you know take it out of your hands and give it to me for the rest of your life and I'll take you to places you've never been before. And, um, and, and he's done it. He's done it. So I'm, just, I'm just grateful to God and I'm living my life every day to, to build, build the kingdom of God. That's what my whole life is about. I, I love God and I just want to see his people blessed. You know, guys, you know, men, men know about God in their minds, but yet to them, to serve him means I'm going to give up all the things that I want to do, and so maybe I'll wait till I'm so old that I don't have any more temptations or desires, then I'll start going to church, not realizing that the very things that they think are, that are good are actually killing them. Uh, what do you tell them? What do you talk to men about? Because in that locker room, there's a lot of noise being, I mean, there's a lot of stuff being said, and to stand for Jesus in an NFL locker room is not easy. I'm going I'm to go to you first and then go back down the line. I mean, uh, I heard somebody speak earlier backstage about, you know, how people, uh, I think it was the young man, the, the youth pastor, how, you know, kids have access to all these things, all this money, and, and all these kind of the riches. And now we have guys in our locker room, guys who get paid a lot of money. And, you know, I'm, I was a fourth-round draft pick, so I don't have, this, you know, that kind of status. But they come to me asking me about, you know, why, why are you so happy? You know, why, why is your, your marriage going the way it is? How, you know, how do you deal with, how do you stop having sex? How do you stop, you know, drinking and doing those type of things? And, and that what, that's what makes it real to me. That's, that character, how you live your life, it, it speaks volumes for, you know, who you are. Okay, Tony? Yeah, I, I feel the same way. You know, it's one of those things that, um, you know, much like Dave Zott did for me in my life, um, you know, Dave wasn't a man who, you know, was walking around beating people over with, with his, beating people over the head with his Bible. He was just a man that, you know, you saw him, you looked at him, you just knew there was something different about him. Um, and once I really got a chance to spend time with him, I understand that his foundation was in that word. And that's how I try to live my life now. And obviously, I, you know, still make mistakes and understand that I'm not what I used to be, but I'm a lot further along than, and I know that God is still working in my life now. Um, but it's just one of those things that, you know, you just try to, and I'm, I'm the old guy on the team, and guys come to you. They come to you for, like Brad said, they come for you for different advice. They talk to you about, man, what's the key to longevity in the league? You know, what is, uh, you know, how do I take care of my money? All those kind of things. But then it gives you an opportunity to say, well, yeah, I can teach you these things, but also let me tell you a little bit about Jesus Christ as well. You know, there's a, there's a lot of criticism about athletes using their platform to preach Jesus. I mean, there, there are articles that come out all the time almost mocking the people. Uh, you, it, you're, you're, it's, it's almost shocking in, in a world with such, de such a desperate need for role models when somebody's going to point to the sky or take a knee. Um, how do you respond to the criticism? I'm going to start with you, Tony, and then go back. How do, you, how do you respond if somebody says, man, you know, why don't you just keep that faith to yourself? You know, you're up here talking about God, and, you know, yeah. we, we, we wanted to watch football. We didn't want to watch you talking about Jesus or pointing to him. What do you say? Well, you know, it's one of those things. That when I was in Kansas City, I did it. Actually, Dave and I hosted a show together. It was called uh, Chief's Cornerstone, and it was a, a show on ministry, and we do it every Monday night after a game. And fans, people would come call onto the radio, and they'd ask, like, you know, um, why are you guys always talking about Jesus? Um, why, when you make a big play, you point to the sky, and then when you, if you make a bad play, you don't? And, you know, one thing is that, and, and, and those are real questions, but, you know, the, the thing that, you know, sometimes we realize, and we play on Sundays, and um, there's been opportunities that I've had where, and a great story, when I was in Kansas City, I had this guy by the name of Lou Bush, who played for the San Diego Chargers, and, and, you know, in the course of a game, I'm a fullback, he's a linebacker, so we're going back and forth. I'm not really saying much. You know, he's John, he's John, he's John. And so after the game, he goes in the locker room, and, and he tells one of his buddies, man, I don't know what's wrong with that guy, Tony Richardson. You know, he called me all kind of names, and he said, you know what, that man's a Christian. So Lou came to Kansas City within the next couple of years, and he came, the first person he came to was my locker, and he said, you know what, I want to apologize for that, for that game and the things I said to you. So one thing you have to realize, even though you're in the course of, of the football field, it's still ministry. Even, mm -hmm. you know, guys are saying different things, and there's a lot of emotions, and, you know, if you just say, man, you know, I'm a Christian, don't talk to me like that. You'd be amazed at where it kind of puts guys and, and stops them in their tracks. So, um, you know, so I'm, if people want to judge me for, you know, how I live my life or the fact that I point to this guy when I make a big play, you know, it's, um, you know, like I said, Sunday is, is, is a day of ministry. And, uh, you know, because like I said, we don't have an opportunity to go to church on Sunday. And sometimes that's the only, that's sometimes the only church that some people are going to see because we understand a lot of 
people forgo going to church on Sunday to go to a football game. And if they can see Brad make a big play or if a guy gets in his face and Brad walks away, someone can say, you know what's different about Brad? He's a Christian. And that's ministry. And that's, um, so if people want to judge that, you know. Well, I'm going to tell you, in Tennessee, in, in Tennessee, our football crowd, we've been doing a lot of praying. And we're, <laughs> we've been praying, brother, so I tell you what, we, we're, we're trusting the Lord there. What do you say when people, uh, when people talk about why would you take this platform and use your faith and push your religion on us? What do you say to them? I uh, totally agree with Tony. It's, it's all about ministry. It's all about showing your heart out on the football field. And, you know, people have different talents and different skills and you know you have to use it for the glory of God and it's just our outlet it's our opportunity to to show our light and if we don't do it you know people won't see it it's a lot of people out there who who will never come to church who 80,000 people a week come and watch guys play football and hit each other and bang on each other and he said why, why is that guy why is that number 49 why is the number 16 point to the sky why are they kneeling when they score touchdowns well, maybe it's something to that, and, and that, that plants a seed, and they go home, and they see a scripture that Tony Richardson likes, and, you know, let me find my Bible, and, and it just continues to snowball, and I've had so many people come and, and say, you know, years down the line, when I was in high school and college, we watched your life, we watched some of the things you did, and, and it kind of led us to church and led us to God, so, I mean, that's the ultimate compliment that you can give, is that you led someone to the Lord, and, and it means so much. You know, I was uh, I was playing in a in a charity golf event and they paired, they put me with a certain coach in the NFL and I'm riding around in the in the cart and and we were waiting on the next group to go by and he kind of leaned over and he was he was basically the thing he said you know he said help me figure this out he said now if you got is it like if you got six Christians on this team <laughs> and three Christians on that team <laughs> do they win by three you know he was really you could tell he was really grappling with. Absolutely. You know, he's grappling yeah. with the, uh, <laughs> yeah, and of course I looked at him, I said, well, you know, historically Christians have never really done well in coliseums. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's not exactly, it's not exactly if you put your faith in Christ, you, you might get eaten alive, you know. Exactly. Uh, but really, when it comes down to faith, it isn't about God fixing a game or, oh, you know, you see people praying, we want to win. I mean, some people fall into that. Of course, we, as again, I'm just being tongue-in-cheek a little bit, but, you know, having a lot of people in the Titans that I know and, and, uh, and involved in our city, we do pray, oh, Lord, help us, you know. Mm -hmm. But really, it's more about the principles of your life that make you a winner, that puts you in the best possible place. Maybe the score doesn't turn out to, to be the way you want, but yet it's not about just doing something that you hope God will be your ultimate good luck charm. Right. Because when he doesn't come through, if you put your faith in just, okay, God, if you let us win, I'll serve you, then that becomes almost an idol, and people, people, people trash their idols. Adam, we've just got a few seconds. Why don't you just talk about, just pray for the people and talk, and just, just in a, a brief moment. Sure, We've sure. got about a minute just to talk about. Right, uh, here's here's the, really what I want to get across, is you don't need to play in front of thousands of people. I want you to know they're at home, wherever you are. You're on display at your office, at your campus, in your home. You are on display. The world wants to know, have you found the answer? Have you found the answer? And so I want to pray for you. I pray that God would stir your heart for Jesus Christ and you would live for him right where you're at. Lord, we come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, and we thank you so much uh, for this evening and for all you've done. I pray that you would stir the hearts of men and women. Lord, that they would uh, live wholeheartedly for you, God, that they would live on display where they're at, at their office, at their campus, and they would bring glory to your name. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Gentlemen.